Welcome to Spotlight on Schools. I'm Jennifer Eddins. East Garner Magnet Middle School is a proud school of distinction with a unique environment for its students. Today, we will learn how this amazing middle school is preparing its students to become active and compassionate members of our global community. Uh, the Garner community really supports its schools, uh, unlike any other community I've ever seen. Um, between organizations, the Chamber of Commerce, the Garner Red Foundation, um, they are an extremely supportive group of folks that um, are extremely proud of their schools. I think uh, we're a important to the community because we are one of the few places in the Wake County system that actually has a K-12 continuum and our IB program is a K-12 continuum in the Garner community. So children start at Smith and um, are offered the opportunities there just like they are here including all the language programs um, and then they come here for the middle years program which is an IB program. They finish up at the high school in their freshman and sophomore year in year four and five in IB Speak um, and then can do the diploma program. So a child in Garner has one of the unique opportunities of being in a program K-12 and the Garner community is very proud of that and they should be. We feel like the two themes, creative arts and international baccalaureate, have woven together wonderfully in that we are able to infuse those, not just in our elective classes, but all the way through our core curriculum, so that international awareness is brought out through the arts as we look at international contributions and the engagement of international arts in our area as well as worldwide. We are able to show how creativity comes from an international awareness through the IB program. So the two of them have been able to offer students the engagement of seeing their world and also how that brings creativity and imagination. The students here at East Garner Magnet Middle feel lucky to have the many opportunities offered as a result of attending this unique magnet school. Vanessa, what has been one of your favorite creative arts electives here at East Garner Magnet Middle? Um, my favorite creative elective, it has to be probably, I had a dance class with Miss White it was a bunch of different cultural dances and we had a performance a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. well, we had them um, in the second week of January and we had two nights performances and all of them were packed and we learned like a, different, a lot of different types of dances from different cultures. Oh really, give me an example of one. My favorite was probably um, we learned some of the traditional hip hop dancing oh. and, and we learned some jazz too. Excellent. Kyra, tell us what you're learning about other cultures. Um, we learn about the similarities and the differences between their cultures and our cultures. We also learn about how they interact with their um, families and the people around them. We learn where they live, um, how they shop, and just different things in general that we do in basic life. Excellent. What do you find most fascinating about some of the other cultures? Um, I find like the way they do their festivals and things, I find that really cool. Like they have um, like parties for their um, holidays and stuff. I find that cool because we don't have the same holidays as them. Okay, the so the different holidays are mm -hmm. interesting. Awesome, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, the Creative Arts Magnet has had a huge impact at East Garner. This is my eighth year here as a teacher, and I will say that the IB program has allowed us to expand upon our department where we've added additional teachers. We now offer a strings course here, um, which is very rare in the middle school level. Um, one thing about our department, we first start off with four teachers. Because of the magnet, we now have six teachers in our department. Um, we represent all four arts disciplines, so we do have music, dance, drama, as well as visual arts. One thing I will say is that our performances have um, grown largely. A whole lot of uh, um, we have a whole lot of more spectators now, whereas before uh, the audience was very small. So we have a lot of parent community involvement now. Um, and I think it's all because of the IB uh, Creative Arts Program. Excellent. And as we know, community and parent involvement 
have a huge impact on the success of a school. Yes, it has. It, it absolutely does. And one thing I also want to say is that because the growth in the department, um, it has allowed us to hire a lot of teachers who are actually working artists themselves. So like we have our chorus teacher who is part of the North Carolina um, Symphony Chorale, Master Chorale. So and our students actually performed with them this past year. Um, for myself, I am kind of a practicing artist, but one thing I do like to expose to my students is a real studio experience. So I upgrade from getting just classroom materials to getting the professional materials. And that's another thing that the grant has allowed us to do. So tell us about your creative arts focus for this month. Well, this month is February, so we are um, studying black history and paying homage to black history. And the theme for this month is identity, who you are as a person and how can you contribute to society. Um, in my class of visual arts, we are now researching famous African-American artists, historians, um, politicians, entertainers. And so I incorporate that with having them learn portrait drawing. So they're doing small scale portrait drawings using the grid transfer method system, and then they have to research research who their African-American historical figure is and then the five contributions that um, they made towards society. That artwork will be on display at the end of the month for our Black History Performance Extravaganza and again the theme is identity and so all four art disciplines we come together so drama performs a piece, dance performs a piece and it's all centered around identity with Black History Month. At East Garner, we offer quite a few electives outside of the common content areas. We have Bad Boys and Bad Girls of History. We have uh, Dream Deferred, the History of Soccer, uh, Under the Aqua, African American History. Um, the list goes on and on. That was about five, and so it's about 65 more. Wow, that's amazing. I didn't even think that number could be right when I heard that number. It is correct. That is so unique for any school. It gives the kids the opportunity to, outside of their regular content areas, to they want to get a math elective or a history elective or a language elective, and they really like those subjects. They have the opportunity to get like an extra language arts class or extra history class outside of their standard classes that they take. Right, and do these classes actively engage the students? They do, um, because most kids, they see an elective as, you know, just an extra class. So most of them, they have the kids doing a lot of hands-on. We have one elective called If You Build It, and they actually have to create models. They use spaghetti noodles to create bridges and different types of constructions. Um, there's one uh, African American history where we have the kids actually running around like they've escaped from a plantation and they really get involved and in a journal about the actual experience. Uh, we have one uh, animal science right now where they're actually trying to, you know, have the kids talk about their pets and how to care for pets. So we have them where they're not just sitting in an elective class as an extra class, they're actually doing extra things in there as well. Excellent. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So here at East Garner Magnet Middle School, your students participate in three years of sustained world language. Right. Explain to me how that benefits your students. It's a wonderful opportunity for the students to um, be able to take a, a world language for three years. Um, we're able to really get into the language, which is really nice. Um, not only do we teach the target language, the language itself, but we get to have um, time to expose the students to different culture aspects of the countries, you know, how, they other, how people live in other parts of the world, and just some interesting things, like I love talking about history um, of right. the different countries that we, we cover, and as for me, a French teacher, um, so I get to do all the other Francophone countries as well of, as France, so that's kind of fun, and um, that's what I like about it, and um, it's really a great opportunity for the students because they get a whole global aspect in the world languages. Right, and now I think that they also could carry with them into high school some foreign language credit, is that absolutely, right? Absolutely, absolutely. That's the, that's the beauty of our classes is that they kind of get a bang for their buck because they get to um, take it in a, a longer period of time, but then they're eligible to take um, the exit exam that's given by the county and they get, an extra, they get one credit going into uh, the high school. So they're ahead of the game by That's being great. able to take it for three years here in the middle school.
a good one was Mr. Cole. I didn't know the clouds were wet. Okay. Well, we can talk about them being wet, but until this year when we went, it was the clouds were rolling through the mountains. And so they actually got to feel and see what a cloud looks like. Science teacher Brian Cole is known as the school's field trip guru. Um, we do two, two main field trips. The first one we usually do is to the mountains so we can discuss our curriculum of atmosphere. And we go into the mountains to feel the atmospheric pressures, weather, how it affects us, and how the mountains affect the students and the area. And how does this, how, how do these field trips extend the curriculum into real world application? Well, we can talk about different weathers and just talk about it, maybe look at it outside, feel it currently, because we're closer to sea level. They don't really expand on how it can feel being elsewhere. Um, the mountain we go to is about a mile high, so they could feel a complete difference. And you can't get that just from book, paper, and looking at it on a TV screen or something. Right. Do you get on a bus and take a day trip, or how does that work? Oh, it's definitely a day trip. Okay. It's a good okay. four or five hour trip. They sit in charter buses, so we go a little bit in style. Okay. Um, we go to several different places, so we don't just all go to one place. We go to different areas. We talk about bringing their sixth grade curriculum of geology by going to the caverns. Okay. So they... Linville Caverns? Yes. Yes, okay. So we get to see different... Um, Re review the curriculum from past okay. so we can sort of corkscrew it all in. So Kate, you are a guidance counselor here at the school as well as a parent. So tell us how you came to that decision. Well, um, my son went to the Magnet Fair and uh, we looked at all the possibilities and really I thought he would be more focused on um, the science, you know, the STEM schools, the boys leader, the men's leadership academy and things like that. But he zoomed right in on East Garner and what he paid attention to was the possibility of taking Chinese for three years and paired with all of the worldly focus courses and paired with the arts program that they offer here, the combination of the band and the art classes and chorus and dance class and theater and everything that way. And the, all of those uh, possibilities of classes that are on par with a liberal arts college in terms of selection um, is really what sold him. And so from there, I ended up getting the job <laughs> okay. yes. and so I joined after that and uh, after he was accepted in and um, he is very successful here loves all the opportunities is looking forward to each and every quarter with a new possibility each quarter with all the electives okay and as a counselor do you see that's the case with many of the students here that they just excel and thrive in this environment I think there's so many opportunities where the students see the core curriculum applied in real life in the classes that are offered here. And so they can see why they're learning all of the things that they are and how it can be applied later on, which makes it just more essential, more important, and then it, sees it, you know, it gives them that self... Um, Awareness, awa maybe. Yeah, that would, you know, that self-awareness, that self-achievement that would bring them forward in going the direction that they see where they want to go because all these all these opportunities have given them the view of what it could be and so then they can select from there and slowly choose that career. So every year our teachers and our students read a novel that's set in an international setting. We like to read novels that are global and that are about students who are kind of around our our students age so they're in the age range of 11 to 15. Okay. Um, the novels pretty much bring in that international learning setting for both our teachers and our students. We all read it at once. Um, here's an example of the one we read this school year, The Breadwinner. Um, the Breadwinner is about a young girl who is actually living in Afghanistan and she's pretending to be a boy so that she can work and earn money for her family because her father is not able to, he was in prison. Um, 
we have interdisciplinary lessons where all of our subject area teachers um, write curriculum based off of the country. This is a display that we have um, that several of our teachers who have items from um, in Middle Eastern countries have donated for our um, international Afghanistan display. So there are items of clothing, the burqas, we have the shoes, the money, and spices, and of course our international Afghanistan flag. So you're immersing the students into the culture itself of the novel. Most definitely. It goes beyond the classroom. They are learning about the actual country itself. Um, certain classes learn language. Um, plenty of things about just Middle Eastern countries, but most importantly, Afghanistan. Mandarin Chinese teacher Ms. Fan is from Beijing and teaches at the school through Wake County's guest teacher program. The students, they study Chinese, it can open a lot of opportunities for them. Yes. It's not only for them to, to know something, it's for them to open a world. Right. Yes, and then they can know what is going, what is happening in the world to help them to think, to communicate globally. Yes. And that is what, what our school is. Our school is IB school. Absolutely. Yes, so the students here, they can think and they can communicate globally and they will know how to communicate with the people effectively. Well, this year we worked on a performance inspired by The Little Mermaid by Hans Christian Andersen, okay. and we titled it Under the Sea. So all the dances in the show um, were inspired by different parts of the, the story. Okay, and how did this motivate your dancers? How did it engage them? Um, well, this year it really helped to have um, something that linked the dances together instead of having separate dances. So it kind of put everything together as a unit. Okay, and I hear you're getting a lot of crowd response. A lot of people come into your concerts. Now. Yes, um, that show we offered two performance days. Okay. So we had um, a packed house for that. Okay. Here at East Garner Magnet Middle School, Students and teachers are involved in much more than textbook learning. They're reaching beyond the walls of the classroom to experience the world around us. We thank them very much for sharing their success with us. If you think we should spotlight your school, email me at jennifer.edens at ewtv.org. Thank you for watching Spotlight on Schools. <laughs>